Hi, it's Richard here. Uh, just finished a big project and it's time to do a little housekeeping. Um, and when I was making my last project, I noticed that uh, one or two of my saws uh, needed sharpening. <clears throat> this is a dovetail saw from Lee Nielsen. Very nice, <clears throat> thin plate, and uh, this was binding in the cut. Um, so I sharpened it and uh, set it. Um, and I thought whilst I was doing that, I'll check out one or two of my other saws that I haven't really used. Uh, so this is a Veritas dovetail saw, which was actually the first hand saw that I bought. <laughs> This saw has a different problem. This saw is sort of jumping in the cut once I get to this part of the plate. That tells me that uh, it needs a sharpen. It's not binding in the cut, um, so the set is fine, but it does need um, a sharpen. So I thought I'd make a little video showing one or two, not a whole sharpening video, but just one or two little uh, things that I do when I'm sharpening. So the first thing is, this is my saw vise, um, which I made a few years ago. It's just from plywood and it's held together with a piece of leather. And in case I forget what it is, saw sharpening jig. There we go. And what I did was I laid out all my saws and uh, made sure that I had enough throat um, so that uh, you know I could fit my saws. In. And uh, it can even take a panel saw as well. Um, the other thing is on the smaller saws you have to on the smaller saws you have to sort of notch out the beginning here so that you can get that handle in. Something like that. Okay, so you can still have the uh, plate protruding. Um, and then these ribs on the back just sort of help it sit in the vise. So let me uh, stick this in. Like that. And then I put the, it uh, doesn't matter which way I go, but uh, I like to leave it sticking out uh, a hair. I would say about that much. So about five mil. <clears throat> Uh, something like three sixteenths. Okay, the next thing I do, um, these are the files that I use. Uh, these are Grobe from Switzerland, I believe. I can't remember if I got them at Lee Nielsen or Lee Valley. Um, in here I have a four inch extra slim. I find that these files uh, will sharpen a couple of saws per edge. There are obviously three faces or three main faces, three corners. Um, so each each side will fasten uh, will sharpen um, each corner will sharpen uh, twice. So what I do is I, I write uh, with the marker here a V, and I know that I've used this corner twice. So with the plate protruding about three sixteenths. I just take two passes um, per, per gullet and I start with the file roughly flat and after about six or six to ten depending on how many teeth basically the first inch I will move this forward a bit so to give me a more aggressive cut um, and then you know towards the end I'm, I'm almost like that the this face here of the triangle is almost vertical uh, whereas it's leaning back at the beginning. Um, so this is flat on the top. By the end, this face here is flat. So that's how I, that's how I sharpen. And I just go one, two, one, two. If I'm filing um, something that's uh, not a rip cut, I might uh, go with a marker like this just to give me some 
uh, clarity when I'm filing. Okay, so after that, tilt forward a little bit. It's actually easier to rotate it in this hand. Okay, I'm going to continue and then stop the video, continue, and then we'll see how uh, it cuts filing. It took about five minutes. Um, again, I got the progressive cut uh, starting off gently and then more aggressive. Um, let's have a look. It's binding a little bit. Definitely binding a little bit, and I can feel over here there's hardly any set. There's more set towards around here. Um, so I will actually set this. Sort. When I'm setting, I actually clamp the um, back of the blade not too firmly. Uh, I don't want to break it, but I clamp it. That gives me enough room to come in here uh, and do this. Um, this is. Uh, a Somax um, saw set and it's graduated from 4 to 12 depending you know 4 being the most set 12 being the least it's nothing to do with the points per inch or anything like that so I leave it on the finest I've never used it on anything but the finest which is 12 um, <clears throat> okay. now what I do here is I look down and I can usually see straight away for example, the first one is leaning away from me, so that's uh, where I'm going to start. Uh, just be careful on the first one not to tilt this too much over. Um, so one, just on the first few, three, five. Once you get past this point, it goes very fast. There, 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 there. And I can see it's hardly putting any it's not really doing anything to these teeth, but I'm more interested in what happens further down. And if you sit at a certain angle, um, half the teeth will become invisible because you're looking straight down at them as they lean into you. And that's that makes things a lot easier. Oh yeah, now these are the teeth that need to be set. So it, it's very fast. It's such a quick process that when it needs to be done, I don't put it off for any reason. Certainly on a saw of this size. All right, reaching there. That's the last one. Okay, so that's one side. I'm not going to video the second side. It's exactly the same. There we go. All right. Let's give this a try. Very nice. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, the other thing I do is just check the uh, straightness of that line. If it's veering one side or the other, just take a stone once, try it or the other side, depending on which way it's leaning. Oops. 
So I hope you find that useful. Thanks for watching.